Okay everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this another update video and so we are of course counting down to the official start of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season which is the 1st of June and so we are currently 38 days away from June 1st. So time is rapidly winding down and I mean the month of May begins just next week. And so we are going to be talking about the general conditions that are present. Uh, there is a new prediction that is also out for these seasons so stick around for that if you want to find out what those numbers are and of course we're also going to be taking a look at that and so but before i go into all these details Okay, so first up, we are taking a look at general satellite view of the Atlantic region right now. And we're seeing that in the Caribbean, we have some convection that is noted in the western part of the basin. And out in the Atlantic, we do see quite a bit of convection, a little bit kind of south of the main development region right there. But aside from that, we don't really have anything going on right now. And we're expecting that things will generally stay that way for a while. And so taking a closer look, there's all that convection uh, that I was talking about. And so this is bringing some inclement weather to portions of the Greater Antilles. And over in sections of the Eastern Caribbean, we do see some moisture there as well. That's probably bringing some rainfall to uh, some of the those islands right there and now let's go ahead and take a look at what is expected throughout this week so last week was a very rainy week for some areas such as jamaica uh, because that trough in the early part of the week it was persistent it brought a lot of rainfall and there was quite a bit of flooding in some areas as well so we're going to go ahead and take a look at what is going on right now what is on the horizon for this week all right so first things first we're taking a look at the total accumulated precipitation map and so uh, the different colors here they indicate different amounts of precipitation in inches so you can use that grid over to the right side of your screen to help to guide you but nevertheless let's see what is expected for the Caribbean so this is between now and tomorrow on Monday and so we are seeing blue shades for sections of the Caribbean including portions of Central America uh, also in the vicinity of the Cayman Islands uh, the most westerly side of Haiti and most of Jamaica so the blue really indicates between let's say about half inch to probably over one and a half near two inches of rainfall thereabouts so that is what is expected between now and tomorrow by the GFS and so let us go to t between today and Wednesday and so this map here is showing that uh, between now and then we will definitely see quite a bit of rainfall in areas such as Nicaragua uh, the northeastern section of the country and for portions of western Jamaica such as St. James probably Hanover and Westmoreland as well those areas might experience uh, more rainfall than the rest of the island so this is just what the GFS model is showing guys and so this is between now and next Sunday. So this is the total precipitation that is anticipated for that time. But we see that spot right there where we have that burgundy shade right in that duration. That is a lot of rainfall. But fortunately, GFS is showing that it is going to be offshore. However, in land of portions of South America, we see that there is quite a bit of rainfall that is going to be expected. And most of that is from the intertropical convergence zone or the itch. But for the rest of the Caribbean we see that portions of the lesser Antilles especially the Windward Islands are going to be experiencing quite a bit of rainfall between now and Sunday as well so again guys uh, this might look very concerning but it is not just for a single day it's between now and then so the total that is expected for the week moving on to what the CMC model is showing so between now and Sunday the model is showing that areas of the South Caribbean such as Costa Rica and Panama those are going to be the areas that are going to be experiencing the worst of the precipitation. And we also see other sections of Central America, including Mexico, uh, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, El Salvador, those areas also getting quite a bit of rainfall. But as for the rest of the basin, we don't see a whole lot happening. And so guys, flash flooding is possible at any time. And so it is always best to 
have plans should in case you are in an emergency situation and ensure that you have all your important files and documents and something that is safe and waterproof so should in case you just have to leave your home you just have to vacate the area you won't have to spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out where all of those important items are and so another step to take is to ensure that if you are caught in uh, heavy rains and you see submerged roads do not attempt to cross because a lot of persons they tend to lose their lives that way so it's always best to turn around don't drown and so guys now we're going ahead and moving on to the latest prediction that is out for the hurricane season so this latest prediction is from the north carolina state university and this was sent out on the 20th of april and so they are expecting a total of 17 to 21 named storms of which seven to nine could become hurricanes and three to five major hurricanes so in this case the upper limit of these numbers which is the 21 named storms the nine hurricanes the five major hurricanes that would be the worst case scenario however the lower limit which is 17 named storms seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes uh that would sort of be somewhat of a better scenario although it only takes one storm to really cause some massive destruction here but the point is all of the predictions that we are seeing maybe with the exception of one we're seeing that everyone is calling for an above average hurricane season a really active season this year uh, which is getting more and more likely because we're seeing signs of that and so staying in that La Nina pattern, a weak La Nina or potentially a neutral and so, but either case uh, would lead to the season being pretty active. But of course, La Nina would result in more activity because conditions are more favorable. And so the current value is minus 0 0.8 degrees Celsius. And so that in the case that it is in a La Nina, because for the most part, it is below that minus 0.5 line. So right there, that is the start of a La Nina so once this temperature remains below that then that means that we are still in a la nina and we see that that is the trend so even though we're seeing all of these fluctuations it is below that minus 0.5 degrees celsius below normal uh, mark right there and as time goes by we're also seeing that things are starting to really warm up so let us go ahead and take a look at that sea surface temperature map and so we are seeing uh, that sections of the gulf of mexico especially the bay of campeche things are getting pretty warm and we also have that area right there that is infiltrating all of those cool waters so we're starting to see that things are starting to get together as we approach the start of the hurricane season and so a lot of activity is expected as we're going to be heading into those summer months and I will be keeping you updated as time goes by. And so if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can also share thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be weather wise.